All right, y'all, back again, another video. Uh, full disclosure, I did not watch this game. I had to work. I was busy doing some stuff. So, y'all gonna be like, well, why are you talking about the game? Because there's some things I want to talk about in regards to this, and I'm not going to get into individual player performance. I don't think that matters as much for this video. Okay, so Pels beat... Cleveland, who was missing Colin Sexton and Darius Garland. Uh, I'm high on Cleveland, extremely high, and I think their future is bright. I think low-key, they're going to be one of the more difficult matchups for teams going forward. And at least for me, those two not being present matters a lot. But, back to the nature of my first statement, I think they had plenty of talent on that team, even without those two. I didn't watch the game, so I don't know if Jared Allen played. But, you know, you got him, Kevin Love, Isaac Okoro, like, you know, Seti Osman. Those guys alone, they're not like, oh my God, going to, you know, rock your socks off on paper. But they pose a significant enough threat. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, this is an embarrassing win or this is not a good win. I agree yet disagree. Here's the thing. As I set my phone in a way where I don't have to hold it. The way that this game ended was not good. This game should not have been highly contested. But it was. And it took them like the last minute or so of the game to kind of like put them away. They sh this shouldn't be happening when you have Brandon Ingram and Zion on the team on the floor at the same time. This should not happen. And the worst part is they were on the second game of a back-to-back. -back. So they definitely shouldn't have struggled with this team. They should have ran the boys out the building. But they put up a, a, a fight, which is going to lead me to the what made me decide to rush home so I could do this video. The Pelicans don't have any heart, any tenacity, right? They don't have any pride. When you're Zion Williamson, number one overall pick, generational talent and your Brandon Ingram number two overall pick three-way score one of the best of the young group that's coming up you guys gotta have some pride you can't be satisfied with just going out there and playing this team and and only squeaking by on the, on the second night of a back to back. You, your job should be to go out there and, and take heads and take names. For you to go out here with this team, and by the way, even if Lonzo played, I would say the same thing. I'm, matter of fact, for the purpose of this video, let me go ahead and include Lonzo in this too. Because I don't want there to be any mistake. I'm not leaving Lonzo out of this at all. I'm talking about the entirety of this team, but particularly on the heads of the team. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. You got to have more pride than to go out there and say, okay, we're going to play a team that's exhausted on the second night of a back-to-back -back and go down to the wire with them. How much heart and pride must Cleveland have to go out there on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, have to fight Zion and B.I. all the way to the end and barely lose the game? Think about this. How much pride? Where is your pride, Lonzo, B.I., and Zion? And to a lesser extent, Stephen Adams, Jackson Hayes, uh, Najee Marshall, uh, Eric Bledsoe, the rest of these guys that's playing. Where is your pride? Where is your heart? Where is your sense of this matters? There is no reason why this team for this alleged talent that we have should not be going out here stomping this team's ass. And I get it. These are all professional players. And we shouldn't take them lightly. 
But when you go out there, you're playing a team, and they're missing their two best players, even though they got some talent in other places, you still got what is a generational talent and an all-NBA level scorer in B.I. Yes, he is all-NBA level. Would he be on an all-NBA team this season? No, but he is up there. Okay? There's no reason, and he's, an, he's a former All-Star. There's no reason you guys should be going into this place here. You're missing Lonzo Ball, but at the same time, you still have the two main fulcrums of the team, the, the, so, the supposed core or the duo. That's what this team is supposed to be built around. You guys, including Lonzo too, but you guys definitely have to have more pride than this. There's no reason I should look out there. I didn't even watch this game, but I can tell you one thing. Because I know I was if I was checking in on the score. The score was really within three most of the game. It was within three most of the game. Why can they have enough pride to play their hearts out and fight? I didn't even watch this game, but I can tell you they played with a lot more intensity and effort than the Pelicans probably were ready for. Why is this happening? Why? You got to want it, man. We can't want it for, for you, okay? And maybe you need to break up certain parts of this team. I know we don't have everything that we need to work with, and I get that. But even still, you guys should be hungry. You guys should be, like, wanting to face the Lakers, the Jazz, you know, the Suns, these guys. You should want that playing game or at least get it to the A spot. Or even the seventh spot. Fuck it. You should want that. That should be the only thing on your mind. You guys, we, I'm, I'm going to mention this player's name. Maybe I shouldn't, but I am. Kobe Bryant. Mamba mentality. You Not everybody can be a black mamba or have mamba mentality. That's a Kobe thing. But what it means or what it represents to have that, that drive, that willingness to compete at the highest level and to leave it all out there on the floor. Where is that with this team? Where's this team's soul? I can't be the only one that, that, that you know watches the games and just sit there and wonders like, damn, why does team just seem like they don't have it? You got to look at the head of the snake. <clears throat> Think about this, people. Chris Paul went to OKC. OKC embodied everything that Chris Paul was last year, right? Where are they now without him? If they, if they still had Chris Paul, OKC would probably be a seventh or sixth seed again this year. OKC went to Phoenix. Phoenix went from barely missing a playing game opportunity to being basically tied for first place. They embody the soul of Chris Paul. And to a lesser extent, but to a still great extent or greater extent, Devin Booker. They're representative of the Phoenix Suns. And they go out there and they play with it. Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert. Really, Donovan Mitchell, that's his team. Representative of him. Well, what about Steph Curry and the Warriors? The Warriors are just trash. Outside of Steph, I mean, we could talk about Wiggins. He's good. And Kelly Oubre is all right. And then Draymond, he's okay. They're, they're, but they really don't have talent talent this year. They just don't. Their bitch is worse than ours. If, if I'm going to be 100% respectful, their bitch is worse than ours. Steph would, would trade places in a heartbeat to be on the Pelicans. But again, where's the pride? Lakers don't even have LeBron and, and, and AD, and they still play with pride. They just beat Brooklyn yesterday. Where is your heart, New Orleans Pelicans? I told you I was going to go a different way with this video. I don't want to talk about the game itself. Obviously, I didn't watch it, so I can't really talk about it. I could, 
but I'm not. We need to talk about what fucking matters here. Where is your heart? See, I don't give a damn how many players we get in. We can win some games because we get some better players for sure. But how many games are you going to throw away because you didn't come out there with heart, intensity, a will? Show me one team that Kobe or MJ pioneered a champion that just rolled over. They just rolled over. They just didn't give a fuck. You know, it, it's just like every night you didn't know what you were going to get. Show me one team. Kobe, even without help, was still fighting. Like you could tell, you could feel his fervor through the screen. You knew he was trying to win the game regardless of who was out there. He didn't give a damn. MJ, it didn't matter who the fuck was out there. He was If he had to put up 60 to try to win, he would put up 60. And I know these guys aren't, you know, they aren't them. I know that. I know they're not them. But you got to have that sense of, uh, you know, I believe it was JJ and a couple others talked about this new generation. They don't think they actually love the game. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe these guys just don't love the game like that. Maybe they like basketball. Maybe they like what it can do for them. But maybe they don't love the game like that, where they would die to play, like, with, with if they could play basketball. The Pelicans have deep-rooted issues from their core players. And they may be winning more games right now than they had been. But remember, at one point, this team was 4-2 this season. They've won games at different points of this season. They even had a winning record at one point. But this team lacks it. Who are the Pelicans? Their team that just rolls over and gives you three-pointers and dies on a regular basis. And that's why they're saying play the Pels, break, break the record or break a record. This is downright pathetic. And I started this video off giving praise to Cleveland because I didn't want to undersell any of those guys out there. I really like that team. I think if you put a Kawhi or somebody, Katie, on that team, that team is, is good to go. You know, you give that team Giannis or something, that team is good to go. They'll, they'll be in the playoff hunt every year. They just need one more piece to just, like, take them over It's over the top. <clears throat> I'm not sure how Darius Garland is going to develop. I got to watch him a little bit more. But Colin Sexton is that dude. I like Colin Sexton. That guy's going out there every night trying to win games. Who has heart like that? The only time I've seen heart like that on this team, or the last time I saw real heart like that on this team, is when Brandon Ingram last year, hit that clutch shot against the Jazz. And he was pumped up after that. That's the last time I really saw that, wow, the boy's ready. They, they trying to get it. I don't know what's happened. I've not been watching the Pelicans really prior to, you know, the Lakers trio going. So I really can't say. I know they had AD and Boogie at one point and Rondo. And I know with Rondo, they definitely were formidable for sure. And I actually thought they, if that team had matched up healthy against the Warriors, they probably would have beat the Warriors because I don't think they would have had an answer for both Boogie and AD. I think it would have been too much. With Rondo's IQ and passing, I thought they could have got, got the Warriors in their prime even with KD. And notably me saying this stuff, a lot of the players I'm talking about are point guards or passers who embody the soul of the team, which is why it's important to include Lonzo here. Because if you're the de facto point guard, this team has to resonate with you or resonate with you. Now, to some degree, I get it. Your best players have to control or dictate that, in which case 
most of the best players are guards in the league. But even among the teams that don't have best players as guards, Giannis, LeBron, KD, Kawhi, they take on the imagery or the energy or of the best player. That's how the teams have always been. The Spurs, when they had Tim Duncan, this team needs a soul. I'm not sure if it's going to be Brandon Ingram, Zion, or Zo. But this team has to have more heart. They have to have more pride on that basketball court. At some point, and I said this about Lonzo wanting to get paid and wanting his contract, we can't want it more than you do. But this applies to everybody on that team. We cannot want it more than you do. It's basketball, people. Just go out there and play. It's your boy, Jay Strokes. Y'all have a good night. Peace.